step in. We've got a little bit of a roadblock for the horses, so I'm gonna try my new Gerber. Try to clear the trail. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys. You can study something on Onyx and get a dang good idea of what it is. It's always bigger and worse than you can imagine when you get out here in person. We just did about four hours and 4,000 vertical feet elevation gain. We've got five ponies with us and all our gear and we've made it to the peak right here. I mean, trust me, there's higher than this, but I don't wanna ask any more of these guys or those horses. We're gonna unload all this stuff right here. It's not perfect, but we're gonna make it work and have a sweet little place as base camp with all the food and the water and the supplies. And from here, we can bivy hunt any direction we want, depending on what we see and what we scout. So we have enough time to get this stuff set up and still scout this evening. And I think Drail's gonna make his push um, the next day or two. So this is a mission, guys. We got possibility of up to nine days up here if we hunt till the end. Hopefully we don't have to, but this is the biggest probably the biggest push, biggest mission, biggest plan I have for this whole season. You're gonna love this video. Man, guys, things change real quick in the high country. From sweating bullets to snow. That is some fluffy snow. We came prepared. Yeah. Crazy, we are prepared. We just got camp set up. We've got this Argali six person tent with a brand new stove. We're gonna try to break this in today, slowly. Um, Matt was smart enough to watch some YouTube how-to videos on the stove and the pipe, mm -hmm. and I think we got it dialed. So now we just need to slowly kind of break it in. But we're gonna hunker down in here for a minute and go glass tonight. What the snow, dude. Heading out for the evening glass. Started my Onyx to kind of see how long it would take to get from our base camp to a good glassing point, but it's just difficult to see off of here because all these pines. So I'm out of breath. Sykes kicking my trash, but I think if we just get up here a little higher, it might open up and give us a good view of this big canyon. We found a good opening right here. We're 15 minutes on the Onyx from our base camp. This is a perfect spot to be. It's super windy here tonight, but um, there's just been some dark clouds kind of coming and going, but we're gonna post up here tonight and see if we can't turn up any big bulls. For those of you who watch the channel who watched last year, my elk hunt in New Mexico, we found a bull that we named Pinecone, and this is the little pocket we found him in. I shouldn't say little, cause it's giant. And we're gonna try to find him guys. We got three and a half days before the hunt starts. And there'd be nothing better than locating him before the hunt starts, but I'm telling you what, this year, the leaves are even worse than last year. The aspens, they're starting to change, but they haven't fallen off. So it's gonna be tough, but we're gonna give it everything we got. So get the vortex out and just pick it apart tonight.
guys, we just sitting up here, way up here. And uh, Matt and I were just kind of glassing and a bull ripped a bugle. And I sat there and glassed from sitting down, couldn't see anything, decided to stand up and just take my binos over that edge. There's a herd of elk over there with the bull, at least one. So we're gonna check it out. There's like three raghorns right now with a bunch of cows. I can't see them all. I'm just gonna have to work this rock ledge to kind of see them all. You get a good visual with the binos if it's good. But I'm sure you can hear it. There's snow pounding the tent once again. So unpredictable weather up here. We're gonna get some food in us, try to chug some water. I've got the worst headache ever. I had some leaf. Yeah, I might need to chop try anything. I'm desperate. Get some food, get some water, get some rest, guys. We'll be back out there tomorrow. But for the first night, how much just game we saw, um, I think it's pretty good. It was super windy until last night. Possibly some of the big bulls could could have just stayed bedded or just been in the trees. Hopefully tomorrow it's nice, not as windy, and hopefully tomorrow we can see some mature bulls, but I think it's proof that those small bulls being with the cows is kind of one more tip to let us know that the big bulls have bombed off and they're in their little hidey holes. Hopefully we can find Pinecone right here where he was last year. have kind of collected our camps, our sleep systems, and we're making a, um, it's either a mile or two push to where we want to kind of check out a new spot. So we spent last night and this morning up here just close to camp, and we have not seen a mature bull past anything past a raghorn four point. So we know that this herd is right down here below our camp, but we want to get his eyeballs on as many elk as possible. Clearly looking for a good mature bull on this hunt. So we're going to make this big push. Matt's got the tent. We got our sleeping system. So we're going to have food and water for a night. Then we're going to be able to scout tonight, tomorrow morning. The only bummer is this wind. I know it doesn't, you don't see or hear it right here at camp, but literally just yards off the edge, like I mentioned earlier, it's ripping. These clouds are still cruising through. So. I hope these bulls come out tonight. Um, it's only one way to find out. And we came into this hunt knowing that we're gonna be making some pushes, just trying to scout before before the Saturday opener. So here we go, another little push. It's about 2.30 or 2.45. Um, should give us plenty of time to get where we wanna go and take a look at some new country. It's uh, 3.20 p.m. This is Friday, the day before the hunt. And, you know, obviously by putting in that much time and effort into scouting, I was hoping that we'd have a giant bull found going into the hunts. We have one more evening to make that happen. Matt and I came out on our point that we've been coming out on and no big bulls. We did a little semi-sneak scout over here earlier today, just trying to take advantage of the nice weather. We peeled off the top of this next peak and we found some new hidden meadows. We've, we've never been out here. We've never seen them. I've just studied them on Onyx. Um, so we're tracking our track from camp to there. We're 15 minutes in. It's probably gonna be about 30 to 35 minutes to get there. But tonight, we're gonna be glassing some country that is so untouched and hidden, but looks like, at least on the map, that should hold some bulls this time of the year. Possibly 
pine cone. Um, but once we get over there, we're going to be pretty sneaky. So I wanted to do an update and just give you guys the idea of trying to find a new glassing point is so tricky in these pine trees. Every ridge is just covered. So you're just usually finding these holes until you find like a perfect spot. But with the help of Onyx, I found like a bald spot on the ridge. Fingers crossed that it gives us a really good vantage across anywhere from five to 800 yards on this hillside that has some openings. With a little bit of luck, we'll find a big bull. And if we do, I'm gonna like lose my mind because I know we're gonna be alone where we're going. So new territory, every time just kind of pushing our boundaries from camp, getting further and further, looking for the one. Let's see if tonight's the night. Guys, that concludes our three days of scouting. We have seen a handful of elk, which is awesome, but we've not seen any of our target bulls or any shooter bulls. I uh, sat on that bull tonight, like it's hard to explain, but I caught this, the tail end of the bull and he went into these aspens, not in them, but just, he was in a meadow, but the aspens were way tall. And I sat there and sat there. I was like, I need to confirm what this bull is because it was going to drive me crazy if I didn't see him. Right at last light, he feeds up. And he's like a two by spike, weird freak bull. So we are yet to see a mature bull, anything over a five point. But tomorrow's opening day. And uh, all we can do is just keep running our program. I think we've got it figured out. I just think these big bulls post rut are bedded down and they're not coming out a lot, so... It's gonna to be tough, but we're in it to the end. Five days, start tomorrow. See headlights. Matt and I made that push a few days ago and Dre and his brother made that push this afternoon and getting to camp after dark. I know what it's like, so I'm gonna go see if I can get their backpacks or help them out. I'm sure they're tired. Let's get this off here. Oh, bro, who made it? Holy smokes. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. What's up, bug? Oh, bro. That hike sucks. <laughs> it did. All right, guys, it's Saturday. It's opening morning. It's about 6 a.m. We're just hiking out, leaving camp. We've got Dreo and his brother that are going to go left and check a canyon we've been keeping an eye out. And Matt and I are going to make a big... 45 minute push to glass another canyon and hopefully between the two of us we can find a big bull. Guys, we've got elk. Looks like they're bedded down in this flat, so there's like three of them. Kind of guessing it's a cow's, but they do have some dark necks. Well, maybe if we're lucky, it's a bachelor group of giant bulls. <laughs> but let's see, right at first light. There's like eight or nine. The highest one furthest away from me. Looks like a bull body, big yellow body. He's kind of separate from the cows. Just need a little more daylight to kind of figure out what they are. Well, we finally got some good light and we got eyes on all the elk. And man, I think we both had high hopes that there was a big mature bull with that herd, but there just wasn't. So through our scouting days, we were seeing herds of elk and they always only had spikes and little raghorns. So it's apparent to me, I mean, it's not that it's, it can't happen, but these bigger bulls have pulled off the cows. We w looked at this herd and it was full of cows and like maybe three small bulls. A couple of them were sparring over here. We got some video, but they just kind of worked up the draw, got out of the wind, and now they're just in the thick timber, just kind of milling around and feeding. So that's how quickly a morning hunt can be over. It's not over, but they were in the trees like before sunup, big time. And uh, they're 
they're in a great position for us to put a stock on them. There's just no shooters, so. Hunt continues. push drop some serious elevation I found this little rock outcropping to glass this canyon just a few days ago it was the first time I sat it really good view I didn't see any elk but it's a good view of this really really steep face the sun's hitting it now so I don't know if any bulls will be out but we might sit here and work this canyon for the evening hunt but as soon as you break through this wall of pines, you'll see the view open up. Man, this stuff right here is super steep, guys. We're looking over this big face that is mostly made up of avalanche shoots. And looking across here, the tip top is about 11,700 feet and the bottom of where we can see is about 10,400 feet and it's like this. There's not a lot of openings for us to glass. Honestly, it looks like really good um, mule deer country. But the bottom of this has got some really good water, feed, and cover. Everything a big bull would need and this is the type of canyon where these bigger bulls like to come and live and rest up after the rut. Zero bulls tonight, no elk. So that concludes day one of the hunt. Matt and I are gonna get our stuff together and we've got a big, big push back to camp, but I'm sure by the time we get there, Dre will have a fire going and we'll warm up some food and get some rest to do it all over again tomorrow. Four days to go. Good morning guys, it's day number two. It's about 5.50 a.m. Getting ready to go check out some country. Um, we're gonna split up again, trying to just get eyes on as much country each morning and evening as possible until we find something. Matt and I are gonna sneak off this edge. It's about a 40 minute hike. Just a nice little meadow down there. It's not a lot to look at, but I saw one small bull in there, I think uh, two evenings ago, so. This will be our first look at it in the morning. Fingers crossed, baby. Big bulls. <laughs> Come on. the size of a football field is what we're looking at. No elk. So we might sneak over this edge and see if there's one little canyon we can... We won't see much if we can see off of it, but maybe there's something we can look at. Because... I'm losing faith. I don't want to waste a whole morning just staring at that. So we're going to try a new spot. Currently, we just went about another mile down canyon and uh, dropped about 800 feet of elevation. Nothing glassable down there like we thought. So now we're turning around and hiking a mile back up. Another eight or 900 feet. Eight or 900 feet back up the hill to glass some meadows that we glassed at first light. So. This hunt is the most difficult 
I've ever done. Uh, Eric and I did it last year, and it was just as difficult, maybe even a little more so. But uh, it's a, an accomplishment to even see an elk in this stuff. And then it's a win to even see a shooter bull, or a mature bull. And then getting a shot opportunity is almost impossible. Uh, but just wanted to give you guys my perspective where I can anywhere from six to 10 miles a day, anywhere from 10 to 12,000 feet of elevation, um, gaining and losing close to two to 3,000 feet of elevation a day. And uh, it's just tough. I don't know how else to say it. Gotta ration the water, ration the food. It's cold. Water's frozen every morning. Uh, but man, there's the opportunity for a bull of a lifetime and a hunt of a lifetime in this stuff. So it's worth it. But that's my perspective so far of this hunt. 12 hours staring at this meadow. It's about the size of a football field. All we saw today was a doe and a fawn. That's two days down out of a five day hunt. A little depressing, but we all know here that all it takes is that one moment to change things. Two of the three bulls I've killed on this mountain were on the last day. We'll just keep doing our program. We're covering country, we're glassing. I really don't know what else we can be doing right now unless we wanted to go like still hunt through the timber and just have that scope dialed out and try to jump shoot one. But that's typically not how you're gonna shoot a big mature bull. Tell you what guys, this season for me has probably been the toughest I've had in a long, long time. Makes you realize how good I had it in some of those other years and some of those other hunts, even the hunts I've had on this mountain. That's why it's gonna be sweeter when we get one. We just gotta keep pushing, so. Steep hike out of here. Not looking forward to this one. About an hour back to camp and then we'll have dinner. Good. Day three, everybody. After the morning hunt, we are halfway through this five day hunt. It's about 5.45 a.m. Same plan, different day. So hoping something gives. I mean, you gotta think a couple things is, there's other hunters up here, so pressure coming from different angles should should and could potentially change things daily. So uh, Matt and I are gonna go to this little rock outcropping where we sat on morning of day one. We saw a pile of elk, just no shooters. And it sounds like last night there were some gunshots coming from that direction. So we're gonna go check it out, see if things are stirred up, see if anything's changed. About a 40 minute hike and we'll be on the glassing point. We've seen a bunch of critters already. One small bull right here. I'm so excited because he's in a good spot that I'm very familiar with, but it's just a little tiny bull. I got so excited because I got this out going through the tops of these aspens and I can tell it was a bright yellow body, but just a little guy. So one bull into uh, day number three and it's not even really first light. It's just starting to break right now, so that's a good start anyways. Three bulls this morning. Matt and I are the kings of spikes and little tiny, tiny bulls. I don't know what's going on, but this basin right here is holding some small bulls and we're picking out these elk like money spots in like money situations, and they're all dinks. We just need a lot big one to step out, man. It's like exciting each time because they're big and yellow and they're typically alone. So you're like, bull. Don't scope, you're all panicking. And then it's just like, like. This one's right on the saddle. We're getting some cool video of them, but yeah, I really don't know what to do. They're not, not seeing big bulls, guys. Keep pounding it with the glass against. 
I'm keeping my bino or my eyes in the binos because just a midday lull just was scanning the ridge top and I saw a herd of elk coming over towards us. Just making sure there's not a bull behind them pushing them over. But I think this is the cows from that herd that we've seen a couple times. Looked to be like eight or nine cows with no bull. And we saw those three raghorns this morning. I don't know what caused the herd to split up. Eric and I have assumptions of maybe a bigger bull came in and pushed the raghorns out. Maybe one of those cows went into a second estrus, got missed the first go round. No big bull is close by yet, but maybe he's just lagging a little bit behind because it is a little warm. But uh, they're slowly just feeding up the ridgeline, trying to keep our eyes on them. It's 3.11 p.m. up here on the third day. We've kind of been posting out right here. This is one of our favorite glassing spots for this big canyon. Uh, the morning started out with those small bulls, and then we just kind of stayed consistent behind the glass. And Matt eventually spotted like six or seven cows. We were hoping a big bull was with them, um, but we never saw a sign of big bull with them. So tonight we're actually going to cruise down again, drop a bunch of elevation, go another 45 minutes or so from here, and Matt and I are going to split ways. So. Typically, I hate doing that, why I have Matt up here to help film, obviously, but halfway through the hunt, we're just trying to get more eyeballs on different canyons and just narrowing it down to at least find something. So worst case scenario tonight, Matt finds something that we can zero in on. Worst case scenario for me is if I see something I want to shoot, I'll have to just self film. And that's the best we can do tonight. I think it's the best strategy just to kind of increase our odds. So here we go. It's kind of a bummer when you know, camp is that way, about 35 minutes, and we're going another 45 that way, down in elevation. So it's gonna be a, an hour plus push back to camp tonight, but we just said, going into this hunt, we're just gonna suffer. We're gonna work hard and give it everything we got. So that's the only reason I'm going over there. I don't know what to expect. We haven't been that far, but we're just trying to increase our odds. So I'm trying to stay positive, guys, but it's been a grind. Guys, I'm hearing multiple bulls bugling down below me. It's a big elevation drop, but it's the best thing I've got going. Sounds like some mature bulls are down there. I honestly think they're coming up. I'm gonna try to make a play on these bugling bulls, guys. There's gotta be something decent with them. They're, they're piping off pretty good. So let me get down there. Here we go. Little change of plans. Eric and I are split up. About a mile and a half away from each other. And he is listening to two or three or four bulls bugling nonstop. He is heading in the bugles and I am running about a mile back up the canyon to try and get eyes on the bugling elk. So wish us luck. We only have about an hour and a half of daylight left. A lot has happened since I last talked to you. I got over here and immediately saw elk. Lots of elk. And I just keep spotting more and more elk. The biggest bull that I've seen has been to the west of where Eric is, I believe. Sounds like I should have stayed where I was. All the elk are now on the backside where I just came from. I'm gonna sneak over, see what I can see. Guys, I got this bull right below me at 250 yards. It's pretty sweet. A bunch of elk down here, it's a perfect shot opportunity. And I can do it solo. Might have to take him. Freaking what a night. Made my way away from those elk just a little bit. But I'll tell you what, that was pretty cool. I could still hear them bugling and cow calling. So just to be up there, 
seeing that and hearing that, having a tag in my pocket and a rifle in my hand. That was pretty dang fun, I'm not gonna lie. I know I would have been content shooting that bull, but I was just alone. If I had my buddies with me, I think it would have been different to be honest. So I'm gonna head to camp, I got a big push. Head to camp and meet up with the guys and cook some food, I'm hungry. That was cool guys, two more days. Good morning. It's a uh, morning of day four of this hunt, five day hunt. And last night, as you saw, we got into quite a few elk and the biggest bull that we've seen so far on the hunt and including even the scouting days. So we figured, you know, it seems like a big pile of elk are there. And sometimes when there's a lot of elk like that, it attracts new elk. Um, just like before when we saw the herd, all that was there was spikes. Now there's a couple decent bulls. So. We're gonna go check on them again. They're in a spot we're very familiar with. Um, Dre and his brother are gonna come and keep eyes and spot while we while we try to sneak in and get a closer look. So let's just hope that maybe a new bull moved in. Just getting to where I left all these elk here yesterday and a bunch of them are still there. We haven't spotted the big one, but some of the smaller bulls are just on the skyline. It's one of the bigger ones down there in Broadside. I've got a couple things weighing on my mind. This is the best bull we've seen in a week. I've got people who would love some elk meat. It's the fourth day of a five day hunt, so kind of gotta make a decision. It's a great public land high country bull, but I think I'm gonna hold out another day and a half to hunt. I'm kinda itching to go just uh, north a little bit past these elk, see if we can't get some other angles on some small draws. That guy slipped into the trees. Kinda feel like he'd come out to the top where those cows are, but we're gonna slip through. <laughs> Try to find a bigger bull. So we're hoping that all the elk that fed off this morning probably bedded on the pine tree side. And typically they wrap around and they feed on these slopes. So every single day there's been new elk here. Let's hope tonight that there's a big one. One hydrate and one ignite. 
That is my daily allowance of water until we get back each day. It's uh, day five, the very last day of the hunt, guys. And we woke up about 4 a.m. and man, it was blowing. Which is obviously, like we've said multiple times, not our favorite for elk hunting. It seems like the elk don't like the wind. They seem to stay down, but we're going to get out to our glassing points and give it one last try this morning. Obviously the evening as well, but all it takes is one, so hopes are high. We'll get out there and just do what we do. Try to glass a big bull. Well, the sun's just coming up and like I've said, you get that 30 minutes to an hour. So we're kind of making a mad dash, looking as much country as we can. We looked off at these couple meadows and four deer, no elk. So we're just trying to climb all that elevation. We just drop, get some elevation, look down in the bottom of this canyon. We still have hope, but not a lot. We are sitting right now on one of our favorite lookouts and we've kind of been waiting for the evening before we drop off, lose some elevation and go to our another lookout, which is only 500 yards away, but probably 600 vertical feet of elevation loss. But we're just kind of putting a lot of faith into this direction because Dreo and his brother, instead of staying the night, they just said, we'll bomb off and try to get some different angles of these cuts that we've been sitting on. Again, the hardest part about some of these canyons is not necessarily getting to them, it's seeing them and having an angle on not only where you can visibly see elk, but where you can also shoot them from. So um, they're making a big loop to kind of check some of the, some different angles of the same canyon Matt and I have been sitting on. And that's kind of our play tonight. I mean, I'm up for anything. I'm up for one more big push. It sucks to leave camp and just drop elevation knowing that we have to climb out of here, but we got one more evening to make it happen. So. Wish us luck, guys. All it takes is one. Never killed one on the last day and the last night. I'd be okay with that. Ran out of time. The dates for my tag are over. It's like three minutes of legal shooting light. Just like desperately waiting for an elk to step out. But even at this distance, in this dark timber, it already just looks so dark. So that's it guys. New Mexico. Um, last year on the five for five, New Mexico was the first hunt that closed that I didn't have. I didn't get one. I didn't knock my tag. This year, New Mexico is the first tag that is completely ended that I didn't notch my tag. So I haven't notched Utah, but it's still open for extended archery. Um, so that's two years in a row that. New Mexico kicked our trash. But last year was fun because we had hopes that we could see the big bull again. This year, our plan and vision, 12 months of, you know, thinking about this hunt, booking the horses, you know, making sure Dreo would leave it open to be able to come up here and hunt with us. 
all the anticipation, the time invested, the money that's invested and everything. And the vision more than anything, the vision of coming up here and finding a, a giant or mature bull to go after and never seeing one over a full week of being up here. I'll tell you what, it, it wears on me. You start to wonder like, what the heck are we doing up here? But, you know, we always say control the controllables. I think we had a killer plan. We looked over what I think is the best country that's up here to glass and hunt for a full week, over a week. We were persistent on checking areas over and over again, and we did see different elk. But we never saw a big bull this year. And after glass in the canyons and kind of thinking about, like, where could they be? Two options, in my opinion. They're hunkered down in the dark timber, and they're staying tight to water and probably has better feed down in the thicker bottoms where there is water and creeks because these tops have just been dry. It doesn't look like there's a lot of rain or moisture up here later in the summer months. But I'll tell you what, we got to see this mountain change a lot over the last week. There's a ton of leaves when we got here. About half of them have fallen off. It's been bluebird skies, great weather besides the wind that we dealt with early. But yeah, that one's over, man. Had an opportunity. I was like that close to squeezing the trigger. And I can honestly say looking back, like I enjoyed that moment watching that bull, watching that bull bugle at his cows and multiple bulls were bugling right there. Man, I came up here to hunt and find a big bull. So stuck to my guns, even though I would have loved to fill that tag to have that full experience of getting the bull, getting the shot, getting the video and sharing the mountain with my friends and, you know, re recovering and having all that meat to share with friends and family. That would have been cool. That was the one thing that was on my mind as I sat there and watched that bull. Was like I could get the meat. I could get the full experience and close this chapter. But the hunt's ended and we're going home with without notching a tag and I'm fine with that. And the more and more I get to do this, all thanks to you guys for the support. I do get to be a little more picky, and I guess maybe it's not to not to say that I'll never shoot a bull like that or even smaller in the future. But in that moment, I just didn't wanna didn't wanna shoot, and it didn't get me excited. And, and I'll stick with that, and I'm okay with that. But I'm gonna go home, rest, and relax, guys. This is about halfway through my season. I still have two more elk tags, and I think the possibilities of finding a good bull on those tags is good. So I'm gonna go home and get some rest, clear my mind. And uh, our season's not over. I just want to say thank you for those of you who have watched it this far. I know a lot of you appreciate just the grind coming up on public land, camping like we have. I think Matt has his iPhone watch. And after this pack out tonight and tomorrow, we're going to be pushing 70 miles up here from anywhere to 10,500 feet to 12,400 feet elevation. And none of that was flat. I mean, it's always up and down. So I want to say thanks to Matt for, for going everywhere. And he always was optimistic. And every time I was like, you want to go down there with me? He never batted an eye to, to uh, follow me around. Dreo, Miguel, thank you guys. Those two, they spent so much time and energy up here. And they put a lot of effort into trying to find a big bull for me. And I appreciate those guys. So thank you guys for watching. I don't know if this might, this might be the end of the video. If it is, we'll catch you guys on the next hunt. We're going to head out to camp get situated up there and then the horses are coming to pick us up tomorrow morning we tried guys we really 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 tried gave it everything we had on the next